while, but we're going to make it worth the wait. It's time to dish Thanksgiving week. Maybe we'll dish on some dishes. Certainly the Clark steaks as well. Showpiece of the fall meeting at Churchill Downs. And with me to dish, the man I always dish with. There we go. David Levich, fresh from the Breeders' Cup a couple weeks ago and even fresher from the simulcast at Churchill Downs. David, I heard you've been called a young Ed DeRosa. Um, I think you're the first person that's called me that, but you're probably a little biased. Um, no, it's been fun on the simulcast. Me and Joe K have had some fun. It's been a good experience. I got a couple days this week, including Clark Day and then closing day. So I'm looking forward to that. The racing at Churchill is hopefully like racing because I think they have 12 races Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then that two-year-old card on Saturday, that's a monster in itself with all the work you have to put into that one. Yeah, stacked uh, five days in a row, some stakes, uh, mandatory payout Sunday. It did get hit, the pick six, but almost got hit on again. Um, What's it that? almost got hit again on wait, did you it got hit on Saturday, right? It almost got hit again Sunday. Yeah. Well, Sunday was a dry pot, so a little yeah, it was almost there was hit. two horses, I think, live though, and it almost got hit again. Yeah. Yeah, no, people uh gun for it, and it is fifteen percent takeout. And just ten uh, percent goes to the jackpot, so uh, definitely the friendliest jackpot wager out there. Uh, the Clark, uh, I think, is a betting friendly race. Uh, you and I were talking before we came on. First mission, uh, by no means a cinch. And to be honest, I'm not even sure he's going to be the favorite. Yeah, first mission is a he's kind of a tough read at a short price because his last race was good. He really didn't get to run until the late stages, but he didn't come back with a super strong figure. The thing he does have going for him, though, it looks like he really wants nine furlongs and he finally gets to stretch out to nine furlongs. He's only run at Keeneland. He's run at Keeneland twice in the short stretch, and now he gets a full stretch to run with it, the nine furlongs. He has early speed. So if you like him, I think that's what has going for him. But he's three to one on the line. I don't know. I wouldn't take too short of a price on him. I think he's probably the most upside in the race, but I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go crazy for him at two to one. No, uh, I. I don't even like him. I would say at double the price. Uh, Gasoline has run faster races, uh, and the other one I'd say I'm most interested in is Blue Devil. Uh, yep. Outside post, so definitely gonna have to work a trip under Castellano. There is plenty of pace now. The coming out party off the turf at Saratoga was gate to wire, but as we saw in the last two, uh, which he got very good ragas and Enverson at numbers four, uh, he didn't need the lead there. And I would say from post 10 with all the speed in here, Javier probably gonna look to talk second, maybe even third tier, and come running late. Uh, 10 to one to me, that's the value on the board. Yeah, no, I completely agree. He's been a new horse basically since Saratoga on the main track, but he does have a long run up into the first turn. It's not a mile and a 16, so he should have enough time. And I'm guessing the Linda Rice horse is going to run because I was looking at the entries on um, in New York on Friday, and Les Cano is not, if I'm correct, I don't think he has any horses. So I'm guessing Linda's actually going to ship this horse <laughs> to run because he was entered at Keeneland, I'm pretty sure, in the Fayette. So if he comes, that'll add more speed to the party. And if she runs Film Star, she can claim eight horses on closing day. That's probably why she's coming to run and the six hundred thousand dollar purse. Is there no jail rule anymore? And you know, I guess the there there they just uh, implemented it. it well, that's what I it's not jail. It's some sort of ninety days or something. Yeah, with, days. with having to start at the meet, something like that. Yeah, but she cleans up at Aqua. That's a good point, though. She's coming for the pot, but she's probably coming <laughs> claim a bunch of horses this weekend. Yeah, she'll be uh, watching in the paddock on the first turn for sure. Uh, but Film Star, I mean, wouldn't be impossible uh, with five to one on the morning line. Add speed uh, to the party. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. I'd say put maybe a little light on the price for me. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I'm not a big fan of his. The fields he's been keeping in New York have been solid. But he's been beating fields he's supposed to. And then in the race, like last time out, he really had no excuse in the, um, what is it, the 49er now? Not the um, Kelso. He yeah, didn't really have 49er. an excuse. But he has been a good horse for Linda. And we were talking about before he came on. I think Happy American is a little interesting as a long shot. He finally gets a jockey switch. Not that his old rider did anything wrong. But sometimes horses need, you know, need something new. So he can get back to his old form. I think he's a horse that at a huge price might get in there. And plenty of speed, and and he does have numbers to run back. Yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely, or good enough for third or second, and then maybe if things completely collapse, uh, even a, a surprise win. I wanted to ask you about Straight Arrow as well. The other uh, is he guess, running? Uh, that I'm not sure, uh, but it has been at Aqueduct. 
uh, working at Tampa uh, fits for me. I mean, the, the late pace numbers are really strong. So, if, I mean, to me, like, if you like Happy American, uh, Straight Arrow obviously going to be a much lower price. But Yeah, he's a rare horse, too. He gets better on dirt and turf, and it doesn't really matter the distance. And he's in sloppy track, fast track, no matter the surface, he just keeps improving. I wonder if he'll actually ship here, though, because it's interesting. They're coming here instead of running in the Cigar Mile, where he's proven over a track. Right. I know it says Bach in the program. I know nobody get confused. <laughs> it's the same racetrack as Aqueduct. Um, he's that over a track he's been proven at. So if he comes in and actually ships, he's also a ma- horse with a that's a major player on the real come up. Yeah, uh, to me, it, I mean, the board is going to be the final arbiter. I know I don't like first mission. I see no way. I mean, maybe they might. I could see gasoline getting bet pretty heavy. Gasoline maybe is interesting too. Be, gasoline hasn't. He's kind of striking while the iron's hot. This is kind of a quick turnaround. I saw he didn't have any works. I don't know if he had any published work since his last race. So I don't even know if he's yeah. worked, but he could just be striking while the iron's hot. His last race was very good. Yeah. And he gets played uh, rat today. Would be Bird. stakes Bird. debut, uh, which he's a gelding. So, you know, Todd didn't have to play the can we make a stallion out of him ASAP game, but he doesn't have enough stallions. No. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, by, by Curlin, so, I mean, I, I'm sure they have big designs on this one. Uh, maybe even the Pegasus, which seems to have a, a dearth of uh, the, the horses and training pointing for it. So, yeah, I mean, gasoline certainly in the mix. Uh, you know, not to be completely dismissive, because I do think this is a, a competitive group. And to use the cliche, anyone can win. Some are going to be a longer price than others. But Giant Game was one of my throwouts uh, just his Seems last like two it. haven't been good. Yeah, and I mean, we know how he wins. It's gate to wire, and it just don't see that happening here. Yeah, his last two have been a little worrisome for me. His races before that were pretty good in the Corn Husker and some of those other races, but he his last two, even his last race, his last race really kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Dale Romans does do his best work at Churchill, but if Film Star stays in, I guess unless they absolutely gun him to the lead, he could get a lone lead, but I don't really see him getting a lone lead if Film Star and some of these others stay in. And then we haven't talked about Il Miracolo, Miracolo, excuse me. He's an addressing horse. He's kind of, he's kind of got the same numbers as first mission, kind of similar numbers, but he's right. going to be a way bigger price than him because they're going to see Sai as a jumping off. It's not Brad Cox as the trainer, and he could be a horse that could get lost in the eight to one, nine to one range, possibly. You know, you think that high. I don't know how they're going to bet that horse. It's kind of yeah, a, no. I mean, I, how first mission gets bet is definitely the the key to where the the pieces fall everywhere else. And I think gasoline, who's five to one on the line, is going to be shorter than Il Miracolo for sure. And yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he's favored. Um, and it depends if Straight Arrow stays in too. Straight Arrow actually, right. I, I have no information on him staying in. It's just kind of an interesting that they're running him here instead of Aqueduct. So if he actually stays in, then Ear Miracolo, I think I think Straight Arrow could probably be shorter than him. But that's why I'm not a morning line maker. I could be way off on this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough gig, believe me. Uh, well, I'm ten four in terms of you know having to make a pick, but. Uh, which I'm pretty comfortable. Blue Devil is going to be the right price. Uh, he's 10 to 1 on the line. Maybe takes a little more money than that, but he won't be any worse than fourth choice. Uh, Gasoline's, on the other hand, I'm definitely going to be price sensitive. But for me, I just think if, if they go nuts on first mission, this this board's going to have a lot of opportunity. I think first mission is going to be 9 to 5, 8 to 5. That horse has kind of wow. been- he kind of has a following. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, no. I mean, kind of and there's the story, you know, out of the Preakness and his Maybe number last time. out. His rag is in in that uh, optional claimer was a 15. Uh, what was Gasoline's rag is in in his last race? Do you have it? He got a six. Wow. Yeah. So what was Gasoline's before that? The race before that? Twelve eight six. So he's man. He got a 15 in that race. First mission, yeah. I mean, that – and his top is a nine. So, like, okay, you say, well, he was off the layoff. But, I mean, I just don't see him improving more than six points to run a lifetime best. So, I, I got to be against. Yeah, I didn't – I haven't looked at those um, sheets or anything like that. I didn't know it was that high, though. Yeah, not not great, uh, especially as a favorite in a 10-horse field competitive group. Uh, while we dished on the Clark, it is Thanksgiving week. We have to dish on the dish. What's your favorite side at Thanksgiving? It's dressing. Oh, me too. 
It's not even close. The people that disagree with that have no good taste buds. I don't even think. I think if they disagree with that, they get stovetop or something. Yeah, no, (laughs) no, I agree. I don't. It's it's dressing is the best. Yeah, and I don't Um, like pumpkin pie. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Pumpkin pie is overrated. uh, It is overrated. I don't not like it. Um, I need whipped cream, and generally my my generally my rule is if you need to add that kind of stuff to something, it's not good to begin with it's like you're putting just, ketchup on steak if you got to put ketchup on your steak then you're not eating good steak or you don't like it ketchup on some what about a1 a1 don't a1 is absolutely disgusting people the fact people like a1 is worse than them not liking dressing i mean i i agree on the steak whether it's a1 or ketchup i do like a1 with onion rings well i don't like onion rings and i've definitely never had a1 on my onion rings well are you a cranberry guy cranberries are kind yeah. of a- my, my my mom's, which her dressing is what I really like too. Um, she does some Italian sausage with it, but I like her cranberry dressings okay. But I mean, overall, it's not something I'm excited about. Where are you going to be Thanksgiving at? Georgetown, Kentucky. What a beautiful town! Yeah, beautiful home of the uh, I think the guy that bought all those horses lives there, John Stewart. Oh yeah, the guy that went crazy at the sale. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good. Must be the new mayor in town. Where do you, uh, where's your? Churchill Downs Incorporated. Nice. And then back to Goshen night. Oh, okay. I'll be at Churchill so much this weekend. I might as well just sleep there. I like it. No, I, I, uh, spent a few Thanksgivings there. They do a nice job. It's fun for like four or five races and then we do our own thing, but it's fun to go for the environment's good. For- I, I do not get the tw- 12 race thing on Thanksgiving. It should to be me, nine races. Max. Be about, yeah. literally, it should be nine. I talked to somebody about this the other day. It should literally be nine races. And when Aqueduct used to run on Thanksgiving, they would go like 1130 to 330 or something yep. like that, which is perfect. Yeah. So. 12, 12 on Thanksgiving is too much. We agree for um, maybe the fifth time in our life. (laughs) Well, we agree against first mission too, which uh, is the point of all this. But enjoy the dressing. I'll enjoy you on the feed Friday and Sunday. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. You'll have your uh, single six tickets up, right? Single six. I got to stop saying rainbow six too. It's Derby City six. Oh, that's that's right. Derby Derby City City six. six. You got to say the right thing too, Ed. We both got it wrong. All right. But now we'll get it right. Hopefully that the Clark right too. Happy Thanksgiving, Prince. Happy Thanksgiving to you too.